When evolutionists discuss the fossil record, they avoid particular fossils that show how empty their worldview is. One of the most obvious are horseshoe crabs. In 400 million years, these creatures have not changed in the slightest. The specimens we find in the fossil record look exactly like their living relatives. In short, these creatures have not evolved at all. This is why they are commonly referred to as living fossils. If evolution is true, how come these creatures haven't evolved? I had to investigate. The horseshoe crab is a marine arthropod which is found in the fossil record as far back as 450 million years, only about 30 million years after the end of the Cambrian explosion. Although they are referred to as crabs, they are not crustaceans at all, but chelicerates, possessing bodies consisting of two sets of segments as well as jaws, referred to as chelicerae, and several other appendages. For these reasons, they are much more closely related to arachnids such as spiders and scorpions rather than actual crabs. The earliest chelicerates, such as Sanctacaris and Sidnea, appear in the fossil record roughly 505 million years ago. Subsequent specimens demonstrate an increasingly more prominent carapace until they are recognizable as the order Xyphosura. Over the next 10 million years, their relatives developed a larger and larger carapace while the anterior grew smaller and smaller. The descendants of these early horseshoe crabs continue to capitalize on this body plan to this day, which has earned them the distinction of being called living fossils. Although this enlarged carapace remains, modern species are actually quite different from their early ancestors. Modern horseshoe crabs have six pairs of appendages on their underside. Five of these pairs are used for walking. Each appendage has a small dual claw at its tip, except the last pair, which have a leaf-shaped structure at the end which is used for pushing and clearing away sediments while burrowing. The base of each leg is covered with inward-pointing spines called nathobases. The definitive chelicera appendages help guide food into the mouth. When the subject of living fossils is brought up in a debate, I typically ask for an example of a fossil species that is unchanged today. Without fail, the answer I get is never a species. For example, horseshoe crabs are not a species, but rather a taxonomic family called Lemulidae. This family contains several genera, which in turn contain multiple species. As an analogy, humans belong to the taxonomic family Hominidae, which first appears in the fossil record roughly 10 million years ago. All descendants of that first hominid, including humans, chimps, gorillas, and orangutans, retain the same definitive features being primates possessing an absorbed tail, opposable thumbs, pronounced sexual dimorphism, and a fetal gestation period of eight to nine months. For the past 10 million years, despite significant changes to their ecology, these features continue to contribute to their survival. Horseshoe crabs similarly retain the two segmented body and chelicera developed by their ancestors and for the same reasons. Today, however, there are only four known living species of Lemulidae in three genera. Each species possesses definitive features which are adaptations to their specific ecological niche. Carcinoscorpius rotundicauda is common commonly called the mangrove horseshoe crab, and is found only in brackish waters in Southeast Asia. The carapace of the species is almost fused to its thorax. Limulus polyphemus, known specifically for its sharp sword-like tail, is found only in the Gulf of Mexico and along the northern Atlantic coast of North America. In the genus Tachyplius, there are two species. Gigas is known for its extremely spiky thorax, serrated tail, sexual dimorphism, only four eyes, seven pairs of legs, five of which bearing small claws, and five pairs of book gills, which are used for gas exchange. Tridentatus is named for the three spiky spines which protrude from the back of its carapace and is the only omnivorous living species of horseshoe crab. None of these species are seen in the fossil record. For decades, scientists were aware of the morphological differences in horseshoe crabs, but the definitive paper on the topic came in 2012 when a team led by Derek Briggs as well as Derek and David Civiter published their comprehensive study of Lamulidae physiology in the proceedings of the National Academy of Science. When we find horseshoe crab fossils, they actually do have morphological differences. For example, fossil species actually possess up to twice as many appendages as modern horseshoe crabs. Instead of being individual appendages, they are paired with an extra appendage. Instead of having claws, they possess fully developed pincers. This means that the oldest horseshoe crabs live dramatically different lives than their modern descendants. In many fossil species, the carapace is noticeably longer. In others, it is dramatically truncated. The abdomen in the earliest horseshoe crabs is segmented into furrows, while in modern horseshoe crabs, these furrows have fused, resulting in a much smoother their thorax. So while the basic body plan is the same, these species have not remained unchanged. We can see profound differences in their ancestors, and we can see notable differences in modern species. All this aside, the creationist argument is still, at its root, 
irrelevant. Random mutation and natural selection do not dictate that morphological changes must appear over time. They merely explain why these changes appear over time. By definition, a change in a creature's morphology occurs due to environmental pressures selecting the features that are passed on. In the case of horseshoe crabs, there is no environmental pressure to completely redesign a body plan which is already well adapted. They are certainly an ancient taxonomic family, but change is the rule when examining any new specimen. In this case, we can see the changes leading up to their evolution, and we can see how they have evolved since they appeared. While the moniker living fossils is evocative of this ancient lineage, they are not fossils, they are not unchanged, and they're not even crabs. What they are is another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.